All right, this video is about solving trig equations in the circumstance where you're going to use greatest common factor. Now, you're going to need your unit circle next to you as you walk through these examples so you can see where I'm getting my answers. But I'm going to show you the mechanics of just doing greatest common factor. All right, so here's what the directions will say. Name the angle or angles where a certain value occurs in the unit circle. You're using from 0 to 2 pi. Okay, one full revolution, but you don't use 2 pi, we just use 0, right? So here's an example problem. We need to solve this. So I want you to notice we are just doing GCF, right? Greatest common factor. So look at these two terms. Here's one term, here's the other. What do these two terms have in common? Hopefully you see that a tangent is in common. So I'm going to factor a tangent out. When I take a tangent out of the first term, there's still another one there because it was squared. So I have tangent x left. Plus, if I take the tangent out, x out of the second term, I'm dividing it out, what's left over is the square root of 3. And then I have that. Now what you're going to do is just set each component equal to 0. So I have tangent x equals 0, and then I have the tangent of x plus square root of 3 equals 0. Well, this one is like what we did yesterday, where you just jump that over and solve it. So the tangent of x is equal to negative square root of 3. Now you need to know your tangent tricks to know where's the tangent zero, where's the tangent neg negative square root of three. Okay, so let's think about this. Here's your unit circle, right? Tangent, remember, is y over x, right? It's the combination of y and x. So it's going to be positive in quadrant one because y is positive and x is positive. It'll be negative in quadrant two because y is positive, x is negative. Quadrant 3, both x and y are negative, which makes tangent turn into a positive. Quadrant 4 means x, will, x is positive, y is negative, so the tangent value then would be negative, right? So you got to know that. And then you got to know um, your tangent trick that I've shown you before. If it's a pi over 3 angle, then the tangent is either positive or negative, square root of 3. If it's a pi over 4 angle, then the tangent is positive or negative 1. If it's a pi over 6 angle, the tangent value is positive or negative, square root of 3 over 3. All right, so using those, that information, let's look at first, where's the tangent negative square root of 3? Well, using our trick, we know the square root of 3 is the tangent value at the pi over 3 angles. But I'm specifically looking at negative pi over 3. So I think about, okay, what quadrants have negative tangents? Well, quadrant 2, quadrant 4. So now I'm using those two pieces of information. I'm looking for the pi over 3 angles in quadrant 2, the pi over 3 angle in quadrant 4. So in this part of the equation, x is going to be, quadrant 2 has 2 pi over 3. Quadrant 4 is 5 pi over 3. All right, so that's where the tangent's negative square root of 3. Now, where's the tangent 0? Okay, go back to this. It tangents y over x, right? For this to be 0 means the y is 0 and the x is whatever. So think about on your unit circle, where's the y value zero? Well, it's zero at, at zero and over here at pi. Okay, up here it's positive one, here it's negative one. So my y is zero at zero and at pi. Okay, so this problem altogether has four solutions. Zero, two pi over three, if you put them in order, pi and five pi over three. All right, let's try another one. 2 sine squared minus sine x, okay? Greatest common factor of these two is, hopefully you see it, it is sine. So I'm going to take a sine x out of both. What's left in the first term is a 2 and a sine. Minus this, if I divide the sine out to put it on the outside of the parentheses, I have a 1 there. It's really important that you remember there's a 1. It's not just nothing, it's a 1. So now I set each component equal to 0. and solve it. Divide by 2. So I'm looking for where is the sine of x equal positive 1 half? Where is the sine of x equal to 0? Alright, so I look around my unit circle. Starting at 0, going around clock, counterclockwise. Sine is 0 at 0. Sine is positive 1 half at pi over 6. 
keep looking around the unit circle, it is positive one half at pi, five pi over six, and then the sine is zero at pi. Looking down at quadrant three and four, sine values are all negative, so I'm done because I just want where is the sine positive one half. So I've got all my possible solutions right there. Let's try one more. Secant squared plus secant x. Okay, greatest common factor is the name of the game today. What do they have in common? Hopefully you see that it's a secant. So if I take a secant out of the first term, divide it out, you have a secant left. Secant out of the second term, dividing it out, I have a 1. So set each part equal to 0. Move that over. So I'm looking for where is the secant equal to negative 1, where is the secant equal to 0. Now, secant is not readily available on the unit circle. However, hopefully you remember it's the reciprocal of cosine. So if I flip it over, 0 over 1 is what's happening right here. If I flip that over, it's 1 over 0, which means it's undefined. Over here, cosine, when I flip it, negative 1 flipped over is still negative 1. Now, looking at your unit circle, look at all the x values around it. Is there any place that it's undefined? No. So this one doesn't really give us a viable solution. Now, where's the cosine negative 1? It does exist on the unit circle, and it only exists in one place, where x is equal to pi. So this problem uniquely only has one solution. All right, so that gives you three good examples of greatest common factor. That's what you're going to be working on your homework. Good luck, and we'll see you in class.